Very excited to have Dr. Andrew Kaufman here. Dr. Kaufman, I am aware, I, I have said on my locals page, just one of the platforms I'm on, currently suspended from YouTube, actually. I should say that you're the first to know, uh, other than everybody on Twitter. But you're my first interview to know that I am now, for the third time, suspended from YouTube. They've reversed the previous two, but this third time, I don't know what's going to happen. And so if you're watching this later on YouTube... You're not seeing it when it actually happened because I can't get into my channel because I'm suspended. And um, for you and what we're talking about today, I am only going to be putting a short clip on YouTube and then the rest will be on my other platforms because uh, Dr. Hoffman, I have said you're one of the people on the legacy press slash corporate tech slash government hit list for doctors who are pushing back on the narrative. And uh, I've heard you even called a um, reality denier. Uh, well, maybe actually what they called you was a germ theory denier, which we can talk about. But the guy was insinuating that you're just denying reality. So so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's great to have you. Um, the, the thing I would like to start with, though, I know a lot of people start with like your background and everything. I want to do that later. I want to start right off the top with what are the ways you're characterized by big science, big media, um, big government, whatever, that you feel like is inaccurate? What are the, the biggest inaccuracies that you would like to get out there uh, about the way you're typecasted that, I guess, hinders your ability to communicate your message clearly? Right. Well, um, to be honest, and this may be surprising, uh, but I don't really pay too much attention. <laughs> uh, to what's in the mainstream media about me. I mean, there were a couple of things that have come to my attention. Like, for example, there was a, a Reuters uh, fact check about a statement I made about the genetic uh, technology used in the so-called vaccines. And I simply uh, went on an interview uh, with the same journalist who I had originally made the report and uh, showed them how what their fact check was not accurate. And in fact, uh, showed them from their, you know, the establishment's own words that uh, their fact check contradicted, you know, from a Harvard website um, on the technology. So uh, it's nice when I can take that approach if something comes to my attention that might be important. But in general, what happens uh, with the material I've been exposed to is that they use what, what could be known as logic fallacies um, in their argument. So in other words, instead of discussing the actual material, which I, I have discussed and you know put forth my uh, opinions about, they will pick something unrelated. Like for example, ad hominem attacks are the most kind of common technique and many people have used this on me where they just say that, oh, I'm not a virologist or I'm not qualified. Somebody even said I wasn't even a real doctor, which is pretty easy to verify. So things like that sort of just say, oh, I'm disqualified, so therefore any opinion I have is not valid. But that's not a real argument. And it's the same thing with other things, like someone might point to, uh, in one article I think that was done by McGill University, and I love the title of this article actually because it's called The Psychiatrist Who Calmly Denies Reality. <laughs> okay, that was... That's yes. the one I was and remembering. Yes. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm happy that I come across as calm. It, it's interesting about denying reality because as a psychiatrist, that's one of the main uh, jobs that you have when you <laughs> evaluate patients. Like, you know, are they delusional and psychotic or are they telling you about something uh, true that perhaps you just don't know about or you're misperceived? So, um, what they did in that article, for example, is they took a comment that I made about appendicitis, which was outside the mainstream, and they just said, well, he says this about appendicitis, so you can't trust anything he says about germ theory. And But what they didn't do is actually look at any evidence related to appendicitis <laughs> and say, hey, he's got a valid point. Um, they just kind of, because it, it contradicted what people normally know about appendicitis, they just use that. And so that's another type of ad hominem or uh, logic fallacy type of thing. So, you know, I think this is very harmful because one is it trains people to use this kind of false logic to um, take in information and make their own opinion about a topic, but also it just distracts you away from the substance of what I'm really saying 
And quite frankly, um, Allison, there's really been no one either from the mainstream media or anyone from the establishment scientific community who has been willing to have an honest scientific discussion where we actually just look at the experiments and say, what can we learn from these? We disagree. Why do you have this opinion? And, and you know, this is why I have my opinion. Um, I, I would love to have a forum to do that, but I think these kind of approaches really make that not a possible reality. Don't forget the holiday clock is ticking and what better gift idea that allows you to support my work and free speech while also having a robust glass of Baalbek and a piping hot cup of coffee. First, check out Allison with 1LWinePromo.com. You get 50% off some of my favorite high altitude Malbecs from Argentina and one even comes from the oldest vineyard in Argentina. Plus you get 50% off shipping. They pair very well with the desserts you will be having with grandma while you debate all of the hottest topics around us right now. Or speaking of hot, have a hot cup of coffee with twinenginecoffee.com slash Allison. Also with 1L Allison, these are high altitude shade grown USDA certified organic Nicaraguan roast. The CEO and founder of the company lives right there in Nicaragua where they grow harvest and roast the beans. There's also a Katura tea. If you're a tea drinker, this is tea that you make out of the coffee fruits. You can have it hot or cold. I like to cold brew mine for 24 hours. Both options, the hot or cold, very good, as are the coffees, as is also the wine. So check out my sponsors and toast to free speech wherever you are this holiday season.